Hi, welcome back to this session of Paint This with Jerry Arnell right here at the Yarnell School of Fine Art. And we are going to start a brand new painting. You know, as I've mentioned many, many times before, there's nothing more exciting for an artist than starting something brand new. And then when you get about halfway through it, you're thinking, man, I want to get done with this one, get on to the next one. So, you know, it's just the way it is in an artist's world. I think for me, um, you know, I just, I'm, I have so many things in my head I want to paint, and I just feel like I don't have enough lifetimes to do that. And I think many of you feel the same way. Now, talking about that, you've heard the old saying, artistic license. Many of you have, um, you know, kind of used it and understand it. Some of you are kind of new, don't really know what that means. Artistic license simply means paint what you want to paint. Feel comfortable with what you paint. Enjoy what you paint. And usually you can paint anything you want to, and it's all called art. It's what makes you feel good. Don't listen to anybody, including me. Now, my job as a teacher is only to give you technical advice, technical things to make your paintings look better, so to speak. But what you paint, where you paint, and how you paint, and what style you use is totally up to you. I don't want anyone to try to paint like me just because I say this or that. We're all different. And even when you paint and pick your subjects, now I would recommend you paint many, many different subjects, especially when you're learning, so that you can try different things until you kind of narrow it down. Well, for me, I've tried it all, and I like it all, but there's some things I like better. And you almost always eventually go back to what you like the most. And in my case, I love the wildlife, a beautiful landscape, mountains and waterfalls and all that kind of stuff. Well, today, we're going to do something a little different, not that much different in, in the, necessarily the, the landscape part, but just in the concept. Now, right outside my studio, I have a, we're surrounded by several thousand acres of beautiful ranch and farmland and rolling hills and creeks and, you know, lake, those little lakes and ponds and things. It's just really beautiful. And, you know, and I have to be honest with you, I'm, I kind of hope I'm doing this right, but I think it was Andrew Wyeth that I was reading in one of his books recently that said you don't have to go within a 50-mile radius of your own home to have a lifetime worth of subjects to paint. Now think about that for a second, folks. Those of you that think you have to go to all these exotic places or get all this stuff, you don't have to. He didn't. He didn't go anywhere. He painted his whole lifetime right there, up there in the Chad's Fourth Pennsylvania area. And look what he became. He became one of the most world-renowned artists and was very successful at it using simple things in his own area. Well, before I go on to any of our other projects that I've talked to you about, about continuing with all doing paintings in all 50 states, I got something I want to do today, and I got another one I'm going to do probably another few sessions. But up here, I'm going to show you a, a photograph, and if you'll get them to close in on this. Isn't this beautiful? Guess where this is at? That's right outside my front door of my studio. Just as you walk out my studio, many of you have been to my studio, you walk out there and right to the left as you walk down the ramp, there's this area and that this is layers of hills that go down into the valley. We're up on a, a, a large, large hillside. We're in the highest point in, in really basically Oklahoma. We're up there. And when you look down in there, so you see this, this was taken in last October. Now one of my students gave me this and I've got permission to use it. He's one of my regular students that comes regularly. He painted this in class, his version, and I fell in love with this. So I want to paint it too. It's my own thing. It's on my own property. It's my own, and it looks good. It feels good. It's going to be exciting. We may adapt it, throw a little more color in, can even add a building back in there or something, but we've got all the distance. We've got all the things. Look at this. It's nice, soft sky. Look at the values, very soft values to create that distance and that mist. Then you get into the golden colored meadow. And then right there, now you can't see the whole thing because this ridge right here, but that's a pretty large pond, believe it or not, and that's where the cattle come and drink and the deer, I see them in there almost every day, and so this is a beautiful spot and we're gonna paint it. It's my spot and it's something that we can do, so we call this an artful refuge. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna start with our traditional stretched canvas, and uh, I've tinted it sort of a, I don't know even what you wanna call it, sort of a, a dull army green, sort of a middle tone army green, and this is an 18 by 24 in a vertical format, and your horizon line, if you think about it, is about a fourth of the way up from the bottom. So just make a little line right there. Now, the first thing we're gonna get done in the first lesson or two, as you know, is just get the underpainting. So down here on our palette, we're gonna go to our hake brush. Now this is what we're gonna put this nice, soft, simple sky on with. So come down here and take your gesso. And by the way, I might mention, when you use gesso, most of the gessos that I recommend you use, of course, are the real thick gessos. They're real heavy bodied ones that have more pigment. That's why we use gesso instead of white paint in our acrylic. You get more of an oil-like look. 
be sure you get it creamy. See, I've got this nice and buttery. When you put it out there, just so in the thick form is really kind of gummy. So just put it in there and really see how buttery that is. You know, about like soft butter. It makes it a lot easier to do what we're getting ready to do. All right, load your brush evenly. And I put enough water in there that it's not really necessarily soupy, but it's very fluid. And see, I've got it evenly distributed all the way across the brush. And all you're going to do is just start up here like this. And you're just going to start putting this on. Add a little water, a little more gesso. And we're just going to get a nice coat of gesso on here. You might say, well, why didn't you just start with gesso? Because the canvas is white. Well, there's a reason for this. This gesso, even though we're putting it on like this, it's going to, and we have water in it, it makes it a little transparent. And when this color comes through, when we get ready to put our sky color on, I would rather this come through than the white canvas show through. And so this is just our blending medium. I have people all the time that are confused about why we tint a canvas this color or that color, or whatever. You know, a lot of oil painters uh, will use all kinds of things, you know, oxide, red oxide is a bit of popular color. You can use anything. Well, just because it's sort of a warm, sort of a pastel look. This almost has a, uh, I don't know if any of you are familiar with the Hudson River artist back in the, you know, early days, um, back, back east. You know, this looks a lot like the kind of style they did pastoral scene, beautiful scenery along the Hudson River, the beautiful stuff. I love their work. All right, now while that's still wet, we're going to start at the horizon with a little smidge of dioxazine purple and a little touch of alizarin crimson to give this this nice warm horizon color. A little bit more crimson would be good. And remember, crimson especially is really transparent. So just put that on there and work this up. This is going to be a very light sky. I see the nice big X's. I'm going to go just a little stronger. I want that color to be a little richer. And then feather it up. Nice big X's. Now as you start to move upward, then you're going to start adding your sky color. I still want to go just a little bit further with the crimson. There we go. Now you see we have that nice hazy color right through there. Now you go to your ultramarine blue, and then you take that and you start at the top and you work your way back down. Now in this particular case, I can see a little tint of turquoise in the, in the, in the reference material, so I'm gonna add a little bit of my turquoise deep. And you see I'm just using touches. See, just enough to tint it. So we put a little bit of that in there. Now you see how I'm, I'm being, doing everything in small increments. And again, back to soft, light, airy strokes, big X's. Now, I'll show you guys a little trick. I've showed you this before. If you have your mister bottle handy, lightly mist this if it's setting up on you. And in here, folks, these lights are my biggest enemy because not only are they hot and everything, but they just dry things out really quickly. So you have to kind of be on your toes. If you live in an area of the country where you have a lot of humidity, it's a little better. Like where I live in Oklahoma, we have a lot of humidity. So we have to put dehumidifiers and our air conditioners are going all the time. In New Mexico, when I lived there for a while, we had to put humidifiers in there to put moisture back in the air. So it just depends on what you're doing. But anyway, you just want this nice, soft, hazy look. See that? Nice. And now look over here at the photograph and you compare an almost identical match. See, we go into this little soft purplish tint into the crimson, then on up into the light blues. Very pale. Don't get it too dark or you lose the purpose and the softness and the distance that this painting requires. Now, while that's still wet, take your hake brush, come down here, your bristles are still together, take a little bit of your uh, purple. <clears throat> I got a little too much water in there. I'm going to suck some of that out. So take your gesso, a little smidge of purple, a little touch of blue, and a little bit of burnt sienna. This will turn it kind of, help turn it kind of gray. This is where a lot of us make our mistake now getting this first value. Now I want you to take your brush up here, and you just put it on, I want you to test it, and see if it's about one or two values darker. And you see that little bit of tint change there? It's got to be extremely subtle, folks. You just got to make this like this. 
That's why this painting was kind of